Hello everybody, my name is Stephen Mustset and welcome to my channel. I've got an nice little tutorial for today. It is on how to do boot Windows 10, but it does also work with Windows 7 and 8 with Ubuntu 16.04. Right, before we start anything, I want to explain one or two things. First one is I have not included on how to create a USB stick in this tutorial but I have also created those tutorials separately. One for Linux, one for Mac, and one for Windows. So, and those tutorials will be displayed on the screen as I talk right now. So if you need one of those, please go and watch that tutorial first so you are ready and set. Now the next one is, please back up your whole computer with a Windows repair disk just in case something goes wrong. And last but not least, please subscribe, rate, and comment. If you have any problems, please message below to let me know and i see what I can do. I normally reply back within one hour or a couple of days. So that is it, and let's get started with the tutorial. Right, so first things first, we want to create a partition inside the disk management. Now, how to get to disk management in Windows 7, you need to go to Start and type in Part and then click on the one where it says create and format partitions for windows 7 and no for windows 10 and windows 8 you want to right click on the start menu or metro menu and then click on the disk management then you're presented with a screen what looks a bit like this one and what you want to do is right click on start and then click on shrink volume and then what you want to do is shrink it in megabytes. So the best way of doing this is go to Google and type in megabytes to gigabytes and then search the amount of gigabytes that you want for your storage and then just type in that in here. So for me, it's going to be 20,000, what is just a tiny bit lower than 20 gig. Um, please make sure it isn't any lower than 15 gig. So it can be 100, it can be 50, as long as it's not lower than 15 gigabytes. So when you've done that, you just want to click on shrink, and that is it. So let's move on to the next part of the tutorial. Right, now this is where the tricky part starts. You need to find a way on how to boot to your USB stick. I cannot show you because this will make that this tutorial about five hours long because each computer has a different, not each computer, but each manufacturer has a different way of doing it. It's normally in the boot settings, but some manufacturers change it to a different name and stuff like that. So for me to actually do it and to actually have every single version of a computer, then it will take me a long time to do. But you can go to a manufacturer's website or go to a forum, a computer forum, or go to to even try and find your manual for your computer or motherboard and just find a way how to boot to your USB stick. So when you've done that, you'll be presented with a screen what looks like this. And what you want to do is just click on install. Then it's up to you if you want to install updates and third party software. And normally click yes to both of these and then just hit continue. Then, after this is finished loading, then you'll be presented with a screen like this. Now, I'm going to show you how to do it with the something else method because I always find the install alongside Windows 10 always have one or two problems. So, let's click on something else and then click on continue. Right, now when you've got this screen, what you want to do is to decide on how much space you want for your swap drive. Now, what is a swap? Well, a swap is basically extra RAM. Now, if you're on the SSD, then I'm going to put in an article in the description that explains if you should have a swap drive on your SSD or not to have it on your SSD. If you've got a very old SSD, like four years, then I really wouldn't recommend it because the lifespan of those SSDs were a lot lower back then. But if you've got a new one, then feel free to put a swap drive, but make sure it's a small one and you've got plenty of RAM in your system. 
Now, if you're on a hard drive, you want to swap drive what is about one to two gig. If you're ever going to hibernate, then you want a swap drive that is about the same size as your RAM, because what happens is when you hibernate your computer, all your RAM goes into the swap space or swap um, drive, whatever. So let's get to creating these partitions. So for for this, we want to click on free space and then click on the add button. And then what you want to do is click on primary and then change this to the amount of swap space you want. So I'm going to do two gig. And then what you want to do is go to use as and then go scroll down to swap area and then hit OK. Then what you want to do is go to free space again and then click on add. And then what you want to do is click on primary and then mount point you want to use as forward slash what is root. And then just hit OK. Then you just want to wait for a second and then we have another important part to do. Right, so the most important part is to make sure the bootloader is on the correct partition or drive. So how do we do this? Well, what we want to do is to check and see if we've got an EFI system or a boot and our BIOS system. So what we want to do is go to where it says type here and walk down this list and see if you've got an EFI partition. If you don't, for example, I don't here, then you have a normal BIOS system. If you do, then you've got an EFI system. Now, if you do have an EFI system, for instance, let's say this one here, SDA2, what is NTFS, was a EFI partition, then you want to set that as the bootloader. So if we go down to device for bootloader locate and installation, we want to go and select that from this drop down list. But if you have a normal BIOS system, then what you want to do is select a drive. Now this is normally set by default and you'll be pretty much ready to go. So we are ready to install Windows, uh, ready to install Windows. We're ready to install Ubuntu. So just click on install now and you're ready to go. Click on continue. And then what you want to do is put where you live, your username, your keyboard settings and all that. And then you just grab a cup of tea, a coffee, etc., and just watch it, watch it install. After the install, you'll be presented with a restart button. What you want to do is just press the restart button and remove your pen drive. After the restart, you'll be presented with a screen what looks like this. And what you want to do is just select Ubuntu or Windows by using the arrow keys. Be aware if you do not press anything on the keyboard, it is on a 10 second timer. So please, if you want to go to Windows or you have it decided, then just make sure you hit one of the arrow keys so that it stops the timer. And that is pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please subscribe, rate and comment. And if you have any problems, message me below to let me know and I'll see what I can do. And um, thank you for watching. Bye.